All right, um, <laughs> the setup today is as usual quite difficult. Um, we're so close now, you guys, to moving, and I wasn't sure I was going to have time to film another episode until we move. But I, recently, I've just had this amazing like so many amazing comments and messages saying people really enjoy the podcast. So today, the plan is to do a quick one. Um, first of all, very a uh, very warm welcome to my channel. My name is Caroline, and in these videos called Caroline's Knits, I talk about knitting. I live in Scotland with my partner Ben, and I started knitting over a year ago now. We've just passed my one year mark of knitting. Um, I am originally Danish, and I do knit a lot of Scandinavian designers. I'm also wearing jeans for the first time in a long time, and I feel slightly restricted, so, um, so it feels really strange to have like a reason to put on real clothes but I thought today I would take the opportunity to get proper ready because I feel so much nicer about myself when you know my hair is nice and clean and I'm wearing makeup and all of these things. I do have a few things to show you but I am hoping I can get through it maybe a slightly quicker than usual so that's all I'll start with uh, what I'm wearing today. So today I'm actually wearing my cardigan number seven by my favorite things knitwear. I did probably show you this in the episode that showed my knits for January. Um, this is knitted in one strand sandness coarse and one strand camel Simona strolle. So in real life, it has like a slight shimmer to it, but it's actually quite subtle and I quite like it. I have to admit though, <laughs> I didn't actually wear it very much when I first finished it. Um, first of all, I found at first it was itchy. I don't know if I've just become less itchy over time because the first time I wore this, I was like, my wrists were like on fire. It was so uncomfortable. Now it's, it's not the softest thing I own, but it's also not uncomfortable at all. And I would totally wear this bare skin. Um, the next problem was, and I actually posted about this on on my stories yesterday where when I originally bought the yarn for this, um, which I bought when I was in Denmark in August last year, I also bought buttons to go with it. And they're sort of like petite knit style buttons in that they're like um, silver buttons. And they were just so heavy, which was one thing, but I realized when I was sewing them on, I was actually missing one button. I bought one button too little unintentionally. And I have to say I was quite gutted. <laughs> the original buttons were about four pounds or 40 kroner per button and I thought that was an obscene amount of money just for buttons but I was like oh but they're so pretty so it's worth it and then they were just so heavy it kind of dragged down the fabric. So I inserted a, a picture um, of what it looks like now that I have changed them. So basically I bought some other like another set of buttons on eBay but they were they were just way too beige and obviously this is a light grey and it just kind of clashed also sort of pearl and shiny buttons and then in my stash I actually had these which are shell buttons and I think they go so well in real life they are some of them are slightly brighter like this one is quite bright and they're also not maybe not sewed on the most evenly no one notices that right um and I cannot believe the difference it's made. Since I did it yesterday, I'm like, I have so many ideas of how to wear it and how to style it. Because I think when I very first had knitted it, I was like, for such a neutral, I really struggled to like, think about what would it actually go with in my wardrobe? I don't know if I'd take my lot of gray, but I just, I just didn't know. I was like, what, how, how do I style it? And I think with those buttons on it, it was quite formal. But the yarn, like the course I found is a tiny bit uneven in its stitch. And it's just because it's different thicknesses. Um, but I just, it just kind of clashed with this idea that this was going to be a very formal cardigan. But now with these shelf buttons, I just think it's like, it's quite cute more than anything. And I quite like it being a bit cute. And I think it really suits my style as well. Um, so today I'm obviously wearing jeans and slippers. <laughs> um, but then I'm just wearing it with a bit of like an oversized black t-shirt and I actually really like this look. I think it's, um, it's yeah, it strikes that spot, like that balance between not being too underdressed but not also overly formal, which is, has always been my problem. I love the sleeves on this. 
they are mostly balloon sleeves at least for me um so very happy with that i just wanted to pass on the tip that these shell buttons are so much lighter and i'm really glad i was so close to just saving the buttons for another project but i was like it's so stupid saving things that aren't hard to get hold of for the future shell buttons you can buy anywhere like i looked on on ebay and there was like you know a million hits and i was like you know what i'd rather just put them on these ones that i know fit and then if i want to knit another project and have shell buttons again i can i can get them then and yeah they're just so light and it just it's almost like the fit has improved as well and also i should say because uh, someone did ask this is a very beginner friendly pattern um it is uh, it has rappel and construction and of course you knit and purl and you pick up stitches which can be a bit hard i think um but i really like the rappel and construction and i think especially in this where the rappel uh there's two rappel and stitches so it does a bit of definition that's what i'm wearing today next up i should say i have no finished projects and it's always a funny thing because i often think oh should i should i actually wait to film um to show like a finished project you know it should always be something finished but it's not today um i've been knitting quite a lot but yeah i just i'm at that stage on, on what i currently have cast on where i'm not really that close to finishing any of them really um so i have a feeling that the next episode i'll be like here's three finished projects but not yet um, and speaking of like knitting time and doing things, um, it's really funny. I haven't, so for, for about a month, actually, I posted every day on Instagram and I did it just for fun to sort of see what would happen. You know, what happens if you're really, really active and it's really interesting to see how, how many more followers I got, how much more interaction I got. Um, it's actually crazy how, act, like seeing the algorithm actually do what it does, I guess. And then after it, so for the month, it wasn't hard. I posted, I, I spent maybe five, 10 minutes every day thinking, oh, what could I post? Taking a quick picture and putting it up. So it wasn't like a massive piece of work, but after it, I think I just like ran out of steam for it a little bit. Um, and so I just haven't been as active on Instagram. I've also struggled to just keep on top of like getting back to messages and stuff. And I really don't like that. Um, I'm very bad for being like the friend that never replies. But as I have mentioned, we're obviously really, really close to moving. Um, just a bit over a week today. And so I'm also cutting myself some slack. I think all of these things, whether that's a podcast or, you know, whether that's Instagram, it should always be fun. It shouldn't be something that you force yourself to do. So yeah, no finished objects today, but let's look at what I've been knitting. First off, I will show you this. And I actually can't remember how long I was in the last episode, but I reckon I was quite a lot further than this. This is my office sweater. Just gonna make sure nothing is gonna fall out. So that's the front. Um, this is one I'm knitting from Knit Flitter. Uh, it's called the office sweater. Um, and it has a quite interesting construction where first off you do essentially saddle shoulders and then and then you do Racklin, uh, the Racklin style increases for the rest. So you have first part being sort of a, a saddle shoulder. And then, as I said, the sort of slope of Racklin. And then you do short row. So you have a nice high neck. And this is the third time that I am knitting the yoke. Uh, the very first time, I think I spoke about that last time, that I essentially had misread the pattern. So I'd done too many increases for the saddle shoulder and then I tried to rip it back kept dropping stitches and then the second time um well I can show you because it's still here I had gotten much further this has been coming with me places can you tell I've started frogging it as well but I actually got in this far so I'd split for sleeves I'd almost done a whole sleeve and then I had done quite a lot of the body but I don't know if you can tell but the gauge is completely off between the two. So this is way too, um, like when I measured it, so I tried it on and I realized that it was Mahusa. Like it wasn't just like, you know, sometimes you put things on and it's a wee bit more oversized. Even before washing, it was obvious when I put this on that this was a solid like size, if not three sizes too big. So there's nothing I could really do. I just had to start over and I was 
proper gutted. I've already said I'm not a big frogger and it was heartbreaking having to frog it all back again. Um, so originally when I'd done my gauge swatch, which I had done, I needed to go up half a needle size. But actually on my new one, I've gone down half a needle size um, so that I'm now on a three and a half millimeters instead of four as the pattern recommends. I I know that I should really measure as I go, but I don't honestly think I can stomach it if it doesn't fit. So I'm just trying not to knit too loose, but also not too tight. Um, again, I did um, a gauge swatch in the round um, just to see what it was like and to see how it sort of changed. And this combo of yarn, um, so I'm knitting it in Isa Alpaca 1 and Alpaca 2. This actually grew. I measured it before I washed it and it was about 24 to 25 stitches before washing and it, it, it actually grew to 21 to 22 stitches. I also think I slightly overstretched it when I blocked it. So when I wash it, I'm just gonna not stretch it at all just to not uh, mess up the gauge. But that's a lot of stitches that it grew. And <laughs> now I'm really glad that I tried to sweat it on and Nina was like, that fit doesn't look completely right. Could you double check your gauge? Because after washing the original one, I was hitting probably about 20 stitches, which is two more than the passing calls for after washing and blocking. But if it had grown two more, it would have been a 10. I would literally have been able to go on like a hiking holiday in it. So lesson yeah. learned to always be careful and watch your gauge. I um, basically told myself um, last week that I should, that I needed to, to split for, for the sleeves. So I have split for the sleeves and done all the increases. So now it's just round and round and round and round, um, which should help. And it also means I can more easily like take it with me while you do the increases. It's not that like easy a project to transport. So knitting it for the third time was quicker, which is always good. Um, but I really hope <laughs> this is the last time. And I also hope that the next time I come around, I finish it because I actually think this is going to be a really lovely like home office wearable. So I should also say, of course, that is a, a testament. So it, the pattern is already out. It's just not out in my size, um, which would be uh, probably a 2XL roughly. So that will come when I have finished knitting it and it's, you know, we can double check the fit, but I reckon it'll be fine. She's released, uh, there's an office cardigan, which has the right fit. That pattern is now in English because she's waiting on me to translate it, but it will be coming. And I just have to say, so far, I really enjoyed the pattern. I've just maybe not enjoyed the process, which is, I feel really bad for saying because I I would recommend it, but yeah, it's been, it's been tough. Last time I probably also showed you this which I haven't actually knit it on for the past wee while. Just gonna tangle it all out. So that's back. Uh, this is the fan sweater from Knitting from, for Olive. I've spoken about, I'm knitting in the merino and the silk my hair in the color uh, claret or meanwhile. And I won't speak too much about it today because you've seen it quite, you've seen it last time as well. Um, so I'll speak about it when I'm done. But yeah, this is my sort of lace, bigger lace project. Um, so I've split for sleeves on this as well. Can you start to see a trend? I have a lot of sleeves to be knitting. Um, I can't wait for this to be done, but it isn't that like summer appropriate colour, is it? I don't really think so, but I will wear it anyway. This is my favourite colour. So I've also done um, things to make. I, I haven't done much lace. So this is very much like a beginner's recommendations for knitting um, sort of patterns like this. Um, first of all, this has a, a, you know, you repeat the same thing over and over all the way around. Um, I would really recommend using stitch markers to keep track of where the repeat is. Um, I found that when I do that, it can become sort of mindless. When I knit on this, I've now reached a part of the button, that button, I've now reached a part of the, the pattern or the body where you're just knitting. Basically, you have one round where you do something and then you have two rounds where you just knit. So I made a, a stitch marker um, to help me remember what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm actually, I can tell, I think it's been so long now, I have to remind myself what I decided the, the system was, but the idea is very good. I've seen um, a lot in Denmark, they're called Streikefisk, 
and a way to sort of keep track. It's like a fish literally translates to knitting fish. But it's a way to sort of keep track so you don't have to like set and count, you don't have to mark anything, you just move the marker. Um, so I actually think this one will mean that I am just about to just knit. Um, so this means I have just done like the pattern, then I would knit one and I would knit one and then you can change it back. So yeah, just a tip to use the marker. I often put like have the round sti stitch markers and then put um, like a stitch marker on it so that it looks slightly different, especially because obviously here there's so many stitch markers, I can't really tell the difference. I also feel like I didn't explain that very well, but hopefully it sort of makes sense that you know, for the next round I could then move it to be held on this one and then the next round I could move it to be held for that one and then I would know to start over. So yeah, I plan to get back to this once I finish the next project. So it will probably be a while before this gets like a lot of love. It could be nice once it's done. My next project I hadn't started the last time, which is always exciting. So I hadn't started this the last time I made a podcast. But I saw Lena Harlem Samsu or Lynette release this pattern and I was just like, wow. <laughs> um, as you all know, I recently knitted the Chunky Dahlia from her as well. And I just loved it and I have actually used it so much. It's been my sort of preferred going for walks. Yeah, I, I have just really, really liked it. So she released this pattern, which is called the Peacock Sweater. Um, similarly to the Chunky Dahlia, it's a sweater where you have like a lace pattern that's charted on the yoke and then you have a few stitches here, um, just some Macklin stitches and then you just knit round and round and round and round. The sleeves get a slight um, balloon feel because um, you haven't, like you basically uh, don't have any decreases on the sleeves themselves. Um, so after you put them to rest, because it's a top-down construction, you just knit with the same amount of stitches all the way down. And then just before you start ribbing, you knit two together, essentially the whole way around, which is what I just did yesterday. Um, I had, I thought it would have been nicer had I actually finished the sleeve, but I haven't. So you have to live with the, the double-pointed needles in the sleeve. But yeah, um, I think this is so pretty. <laughs> already um, and I can tell lots of you really like the colour so I'll talk about the yarn I'm just gonna quickly grab that so this is yarn I have also I know that I bought after I started the podcast so you have probably seen it before this is knitted um, like it's like a 14 stitch on seven millimeter needles so it's quite fast and I've knitted it in two strands um, the original pattern she suggests one strand sand this Sunday which is like a thin merino and then two strands of silk my hair I don't know, I, I wouldn't want, I, that was just not the yarn for me and I thought this combo should be able to hit gauge and be really lovely. And it was yarn that I had bought without knowing what I wanted it to become. Actually really glad I just kind of, like sometimes, like when I buy yarn, I do like to buy a sweater quantity, have like a rough idea of what it might become. But I also kind of like just getting an idea and knowing I have it ready in my stash and just casting it on, which is what happened here. As I said, I'm using two strands. One is Lana Gatto class. This is in the color orange or color uh, 14198, um, but I think it's just called orange. I bought it from knit.co.uk. I'll link it down below. This is, I th let me remember the exact. So yeah, this is a really um, interesting yarn. So. It has extra fine merino, 80% extra fine merino, I should say, and then 20% angora, so that's rabbit, um, so it's very soft. It runs 125 meters per 50 grams. So it's like a perfect errand weight. Um, to me, it seems fairly similar to normal errand weights, even though it runs 125, so compared to like Snifluk or some other quality I, you know, Snifluk or Peruvian Highland wool or similar from Hilkana, you could, you would maybe even get away with having a ball less of this. Um, it has uh, quite a lot of halo actually just in the ball itself before it's knitted up and it's um, it's like a spun yarn so it, it has like, um, I reckon it could have quite a lot of stretch because it's spun but it's so far very very soft. My second strand is Cinnamon Stone from Sakami or Feed the Bobbin, my favourite hand dyer and this is 
uh, 74% baby cereal packer, 20 cent, 20 cent, 26%, there you go, uh, silk. And this is um, it's sold in 50 gram balls and um, it's 300 meters. So often I find with the cereal packer, I mentioned this before, but I find cereal packer like this exact kind of a cereal packer fluff, um, softer than any my hair. Um, there's just no comparison. It's two completely different types of yarn, but with the exact same look and with similar sort of like gauge, I guess. So this I find so soft. If I knitted something in this in one strand, I could wear it against naked skin. Whereas as I've spoken about before, I can really do that with any my hairs. I like cinnamon stone because this orange color is like my favorite. Um, and yeah, so together, I think it creates, I'll hold up the sleeve so you can sort of see. It's a very subtle color change. Like it's not too, too much. You know, I think some people can find, um, I saw Balance Gain actually in her first YouTube video. I'll link that down below. She spoke about how Sometimes you find that the hand dyed yarn can look quite busy, especially on like sweaters, and I completely agree. Um, but I think something like this, it's quite subtle, um, especially here on, on the yoke. Um, I will say, I'm looking around the flat, I can literally see tiny balls of fluff of this. And Ben said to me, he's like, I'm noticing a lot of like orange fluff, what are you knitting that's orange? It sticks to everything. And so this is a, a flat only project. I can, this, this does shed so much. I could not take that if I was knitting at a friend's place. I wouldn't do that to them. Um, I probably, I knitted on it last night and um, like my t-shirt has fluff on it. I reckon it'll get much better in the wash. I think cereal packer will always be just like normal. My hair will always be, you know, cause it's like long and halo -y. It It just has a tendency that's, fluff wearing around there it will always have a tendency to fluff and obviously angora is one of the softest fibers you can buy so again to be expected i should also just talk a bit about how quick this has been um, i started this on a friday and on the monday i split for sleeves um which for me was very fast especially consider like considering it's charted if you're wanting to do your first knitting from a chart I would really recommend this. This is easier than Chunky Dahlia. I didn't, I actually thought this was going to be harder, but this is a lot easier. There's fewer stitches to do. There's more rounds where you just knit. So you also have less time where you need to check a chart. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. As it has, at least to me, in my wardrobe, a lot of similarities to Chunky Dahlia. I made a few decisions to kind of have them serve two different purposes in my wardrobe um you know for things to be truly slow fashion um i kind of like to think about these things before i start knitting i at least tell myself i do so the first one being um i'm knitting this a size down than what i knitted my chunky dalian in the pattern and on the pictures the the lady wearing it has quite a lot of positive ease i reckon it's about 10 centimeters maybe 15 and i would obviously give you a slightly more oversized fit um, however, I decided that I wanted this to be much tighter fitting. So uh, my chunky dahlia did in a 2XL and this I'm knitting only in an XL, which should give me less than like about five centimeters positivities. So it should be fairly fitted, at least across my bust. Another thing that I changed is that I did, um, this is just uh, turbulent knits. So I basically knitted through the back loops and then I just did normal pearls. Um, because you fold it down so I don't I didn't see a reason to go through the pain of uh, turpler pearls and it just gives I think a slightly more structured look to uh, the ribbing especially on these bigger needles I find that um, a regular like ribbing can drag out a little bit especially if you compare it to to for example what it looks like on my chunky dahlia so yeah I did that to get a different sort of look on the ribbing and I'll of course um, do the same on the sleeves as well um, of course, there's also two very, well, uh, the two sweaters have two very different types of yarn. My chunky dahlia is one strand quite heavy. I've spoken loads about that, so I won't do that. Where this is going to be a lot lighter. Um, and as I said, this was not hard at all. I was really intimidated when I first started seeing things like this. And I was like, I'll never learn how to do it. But it really isn't that bad. Um, I think this is quite a common pattern. Like it, it essentially looks a bit like shells. 
and I think you'll be really pretty. One thing I found really funny is when I usually think I have quite golden, like golden blonde hair, um, but then when I have it next to this orange, my hair goes like much more like platinum light blonde looking, which is so interesting, isn't it? How colors can affect you. So yeah, I basically said to myself after I split for the yolk um, and I finished knitting the body or finished knitting, well, I didn't finish knitting the body clearly. I basically used up the yarn I had left and then I was like, I'm not allowed to start the sleeve before I've knitted like split for sleeves on the office sweater. And then I was like, I can finish this now. So I'm probably going to finish this completely before I knit an office sweater. Um, but I started this sleeve on, when did I start this sleeve? I started this sleeve on Wednesday. Um, so I've almost finished the whole sleeve in like two days of casual knitting. So it shouldn't take too long. So that is all that I'm currently actively knitting on, um, which is plenty. So my current plan is to get all of this finished before I really start too much planning for what's next because I do find like two projects is probably enough for me. But um, the peacock sweater I just saw and I was like, I have to knit it. Like I just have to knit it and like, it cannot wait. Um, I haven't been buying anything really but you're gonna think I'm lying now because I'm gonna show you things that come in first of all I just wanted to say now that we're moving on to acquisitions that I had quite a lot of people um who were also very interested in knitting needles and I wanted to say that on the chunky that no on the peacock sweater and on the fern sweater I'm using sing needles to try them so obviously a peacock is knitted on seven millimeters so it's a lot thicker needles Whereas Fern is on four and a half. And so far, so good. I wouldn't say they're like my absolute favourite needles. I think after having done the lace on those two, that's also why I thought they were actually two quite good projects to try because it's fairly slippy yarn. It's like, I would say, quite representative of the type of yarn that I would usually knit in. And as I get more into lace and I think that's only going to increase for me I have been absolutely bitten by lacy knitting bug um I would like something slightly pointier I think the sings are a wee bit blunt and that's even though both on peacock and on the fern sweater I have my left hand needle being smaller so that there's more rooms you know for knitting two together or whatever um so yeah I think I'm going to try something slightly pointier. Someone said, uh, literally just commented, I saw it today, that she really likes to hire, hire shop and that she knits like me. So maybe I need to give them a go and then try the uh, Tiago ones as well. Th those two are still really on my list. I um, um, So the peacock sleeve, I knit it on, Novas, and I actually realised that these are too slippy for me. I think... The things are slip enough that the stitches move quite easily. There's not, because it's metal, there's no join. Whereas I found these was a bit uncomfortable for sleeves. Um, so that was also another valuable lesson that I'm not actually looking for the slippiest needles. I'm probably looking for slippy needles, if that makes sense. So our feedback, I haven't bought any more knitting needles. Um, because currently I'm very much in like, a, I have plenty. And as we're moving, I can really justify continuously spending money. However, I did have some things come in. So first of all, I'm just going to be completely transparent and say I have bought a shit ton of stuff from Knit in the past. I checked, um, my first order was in August and I actually put up a post about this, um, how I found knit.co.uk and how much easier my life became because she sells Phil Kalana um, and it was just brilliant. So I just want to say that if I tallied up how much I'd spent at Knit, <laughs> it would be a lot of money. I really like Lana Gatto. Then why knit with Lana Gatto? Like, obviously I'm using it for the peacock sweater and it's such a lovely yarn to work with. Really recommend. I think class is about the £5 mark for a ball of yarn, which is just so well priced. Um, makes knitting in bigger sizes so much more accessible because otherwise the sweater in my size can be like £150. However, she did say... She recently started stocking sandness and she, her and I both really liked the Lura sweater from Petite Knit and um, I had actually brought Maxi VIP which I think I showed, also Lana Gatto Maxi VIP, 
which I've shown in another episode and I was planning to knit that. But then she wrote to me to say as a thank you for having spent so much money with me. That's not how she phrased it. She said as a thank you for being so supportive of my shop. I would very much like you like to gift you yarn for Lua's sweater in um, the original yarn, which is obviously from Zenness. So I thought that was really lovely of her, but that also means this part is gifted and I will put up an ad because um, obviously you should with ad rules. Um, but I also just want to say that, you know, Simona who owns Knit and I speak daily. I think already today I've sent her 10 messages. We gush about patterns all the time. Um, so she is really a shop that I wholeheartedly recommend and I really like shopping from. So yeah, I will continue to do so. I know she will be getting the new Phil Kalana quality called Alva, which I'm really excited to try. I have heard it should be similar to Alpaca one. So it will be like um, like a thin strand, like the ECL Alpaca one, that I'm knitting for the office sweater. That it, so the new Alva should be like thin enough that you can replace it with my hair and it will probably have a slight halo I imagine um but obviously it's not my hair so if you're wanting to knit a sweater that requires it you could you could use that instead um and I'm really excited for her to get that in because I'll definitely be trying that I have uh some projects on my list that are knit, knit fully in my hair and I don't think I want to knit anything only in my hair uh, besides what I have in my stash actually the now in my sort of stash, the oldest yarn that hasn't been knitted up is uh, Job's Kid Silk, um, which I bought in July last year and I have never used because it arrived and I just thought it felt really itchy. But I think I know what I'm going to make with that, so I'll return to that. Anyway, this was just a bit of, I love yarn. Yarn is probably a hobby in itself for me. Like, if if I didn't have a full-time job and been, would be not happy with me, I would definitely have a yarn shop because I love yarn and I love planning yarn. Um, I really like that more people have started asking me about, oh, do you think this yarn could work and stuff? Um, someone asked me how I replace yarns, um, like how I know whether something else can work. Um, so I might talk about that one day. But um, yeah, that's enough dilly-dallying around. Um, I'm sure you're just keen to actually see the yarn. So uh, she sent me a Pia, Pia Gunt, um, from Sadness. I will hold it up closer so you can see. Um, which is 100% 100 Norwegian wool. Yeah, it's 100% Norwegian wool. It runs, it's, it runs quite short actually. Yeah, so it runs, a 50 gram runs about 91 meters, which is quite um, short, especially because it doesn't look that thick. This is definitely an errand weight yarn, I would say, like with a strand of my hair. Um, so Sanders recommend that you wash it, uh, that you wash it, like the, the washing instructions. Um, Sanders says that the sort of recommended gauge is 22 stitches per 10 centimeters and using three and a half to four millimeter needles, which is what Lua is knitted with. So yeah, it, it, it's just a lot thinner. Like if I pull out a, a strand, because um, Knit Flitter and I was actually talking about this yarn um because she's doing a design that could probably work so if i hold it up i don't know can you see that um like considering this runs 125 meters i was expecting this to be a lot thicker so yeah i'll be excited to try it um based on the recommended gauge you would actually be able to use this single strand for an office sweater so there's a tip for you you could probably knit quite a lot of those four millimeter pattern single strands so like most of like a lot of petite knit ones are 21 stitches. So that would be things like um, No Frills or Stockholm or Oslo. Um, so like a lot of, her pa and, and of course her newer patterns as well. So the Lua sweater, she recommends Pia Gunt. Um, I think she recommends it from some of the zipper stuff she's been doing as well. Um, you could probably do the Messe sweater in it as well that she just released. Um, so yeah, it is, it could be quite a versatile yarn. As I've mentioned many a times, I am obviously really sensitive. And I did ask it, I was like, what does it feel like? Like, is it like rough or is it like you touch it? Because Sadness makes a quality called Fritz's Gun and I touched it and I was like, mm -mm, I could never knit with this. Which is kind of how I imagine Al Alpha Slopey, like Istix Alpha Lopez, like the Icelandic yarn to be like. Um, but... 
this doesn't feel like that at all to me it feels i'm sorry ben just texted me which is always lovely um so anyway um i can't believe we've been together this long and still every time my heart's like Ooh. anyway so to me it doesn't feel like itchy as such it feels rustic i would say it's not as soft as Peruvian highland wool and like a first touch it reminds me a bit of the sandaman yarn that i used for my chunky dahlia that kind of like very untreated natural yarn feel and so for rustic lovers um penrose knits uh her club of rustic yarn lovers this is probably for you i think you'd love it i have sat with it like this for an extended period of time as my neck is the most sensitive i usually know immediately if i put it up and it's like mm -mm. but this feels all right i my initial thoughts are this yarn would be the type of yarn that you can feel when you're wearing which is something when i very first started knitting i would have hated but the chunky dahlia has really started to change my view and has really started to make me sort of like realize that there's a difference between like itching and having a rustic feel so yeah i am excited to knit this up this is in the color 112 i saw someone on the hashtag had knitted in this so you can always have a look um i think one of the test knitters used this color and i just really really liked it it's um i think it'll be very neutral for summertime and the lure sweater from petite knit is um very oversized like casual long sleeve and not too tight ribbing um racklin sweater um so i thought this color would be great i could just imagine wearing it in summertime with like nice flowy skirt that i have sneakily bought that would fit this perfectly so yeah that's on my list another yarn that arrived actually arrived in this which is so cute um this is from botanical yarn who i've wanted to buy from for ages and she does dye to order yarn. Um, I know Feed the Bobbin will also like dye if you contact her. I think some of the other dyers might not, but um, just to say it's always worth asking a dye, especially if you're buying sweater quantities, if they will dye just for you if something isn't in stock. But when so when Knit Flitter released her early morning sweater pattern, um, she actually sent it to me. And this was before we knew each other that well. Um, and she's just like, I just thought I'd pass it on if you'd want to knit it one day. And um, Lip Flitter's early morning sweater is also a classic, um, you know, folded down neck band, raglan. Well, I don't think it's true raglan. It has a special shoulder construction classic to Lip Flitter. And slight balloon sleeves. So not this balloony, but slight, slightly bigger sleeves. And then I helped her translate her... Um, uh, I helped with some of the translation of the early morning pattern. I basically proofread it. And then as a thank you, I will find one where the touch is still properly on. Here we go. And as a thank you, she offered to send me some mohair for um, the early morning sweater. And her one is in this like, she used hand dyed um, mohair with just um, alpaca drops, um, baby alpaca silk. Um, and I just really like that look um, of that like, it's like grey, a tiny bit purple, lilac-y. So she uh, suggested this, which she gifted to me, sent it across. She bought it with her own money, full transparency. This is from Yadigan, and I have also shown this in a previous episode. So for my second strand, I bought in the dyed to order section of um, Botanical Yarns. I bought Amazing Grey, which is, I think, one of her most popular colours, which is, um, and I bought it on her Delight 4-ply, I think it's called. Um, it's the one that's 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. This is one of the softest yarns I have ever touched. God, I, the feel of this yarn, it's, <laughs> these are like night and day. This is so like rustic and yarny and like woolly and you like, it's like you can almost feel the sheet when you touch it. This is like so soft. It's like when you've just shaved your legs and put moisturizer on, it's soft. So I bought this to go with it. I'll hold it up so you can maybe see. And so um, I would say the base color is, it's definitely gray, but it's a very specific tone of gray, I feel. Um, so, and then it has speckles of purple. Sorry, I'm getting messages. How annoying people want to contact me. 
Um, so yeah, uh, it has like speckles of uh, purple and this like golden orangey color through it. And a few others, like you can see some blue here and stuff. I also decided to, um, unfortunately, for some reason, this gain itself, like this, was too big for my yarn winder and I had a nightmare and I had to finish rolling it up in my like hand powered but maybe you can kind of get the gist of what it looks like it's I was surprised because when it arrived like this I was like not as colorful as I had expected like it was really soft and really pretty but I kind of hoped for more like more color throughout it and then I wound it up and I was like wow this is what I imagine it to look like I think it's just because before I bought the winder, I always just did it myself. Um, so I have this now in sweater quantity and um, this will probably be one of my next cast on because it's going to, it's just a great sweater for round and round and round kind of knitting. So, so yeah, I'm really excited to knit this and I think this will be like a perfect neutral combination. When I edit, I'm always happy when I do this like holding up. So I hope it's useful because I think that's really when you get to see the colours more than anything. That's all folks. I haven't, as I said, I've been knitting loads, but um, at the moment I'm just really happy with what's on, like in my yarn stash and to be knitted with. And I kind of want to get through a lot of that. So I hope that the next time I see you, that I will be, I'll still be on this sofa because we bought new sofas for the new house, but they take nine weeks to come in, which is a very long time. Um, but yeah, I will at least see you from the new house. I'm quite happy because um, I'd gone all ready to film, you know, put on makeup and all of that. And then it just started like absolutely chopping it down. And the whole fat just turned like, it was like someone had turned off the sun. Yeah, I can't wait to move into my, my new house. And um, I just want to say to anyone out there that at least for me, when we first started saving for house, I honestly felt like it was never going to happen um, in the UK. For I know in Denmark it sounds a lot easier. My family has been shocked. Um, it has been like, it's just so difficult. And especially right now when they want 20% deposit of the house, 20% uh, is a lot of money <laughs> for a house, but I hope, yeah, I'm hopeful that things will work out. Obviously you never ever know until like the keys are literally in the door but um all the formalities are done and yeah i will be packing all weekend um but hopefully i'll squeeze in some knitting i think that's basically all as usual i put all the links and everything else down below i always like to you know i've mentioned a few names um i always like to you know pass on the love for other knitting podcasts so um i've seen a few more people going into them hive knits posted today to say do you have any recommendations? And, and I would always like recommendations down below, especially if some of you watching maybe have one. I have really been loving Pen, Pen Rose Knits ones. Like, I don't know how she does it, but she knits so much and so many pretty things and she's just a complete natural. Um, and Balanced Gain is also really good. She just put up her first one and um, I really like seeing someone knit slightly different things to me. And, and she showed some really nice like acrylic yarns as well which is definitely not something I have ever really worked with, but it's always nice to kind of, I guess, see people's yarn choices that aren't just like your own. And I would also like to say, if you're watching this and you've stuck through this long, you must clearly really like knitting podcasts. And I would really recommend you just go for it if you've ever considered filming. It It isn't as bad as you'd think it is. Like I film on my iPhone, which is really easy and so worth it. Um, and then I just edit in iMovie. Um, so yeah, you probably wouldn't need to edit. I'm just slightly particular. I think it's, um, in my actual job, I work with people who are professional video, like video editors and education. So I, I kind of think it's like, I need to know that I've watched it through, make sure everything's nice. But yeah, just to say if anyone out here is watching and wanting to create a podcast or want to tip about one, that would be brilliant because I'm always looking for more to watch. So anyway, that should be all the talking today. I've probably spoken for way longer than I anticipated, but I hope you enjoyed nevertheless. And I'll hopefully see you in about three weeks time. <laughs> all right, see you later. Bye.